a pink USB powered blender. Well, I say USB powered, USB charged blender. And this one came from an eBay seller. Uh, someone mentioned that these were available and I thought, well, let's buy the cheapest, shittiest one I can find. I'll see what it's like. So I got it in pink, obviously. And this one came from a seller called Say Hello 2015. Now, see, that's how you should do a name. That's it. That's dead easy to remember. However, as always, shop about on eBay because uh, as soon as uh, you all start buying from that one seller, the price will go through the roof. That's assuming it's worth buying, which is something we're going to find out. So what we've got here is a device that uh, the specifications say holds 380 milliliters, uh, DC 3.6 volts, and it says the working current is 10 to 12 amps, which, assuming the voltage might drop a little bit from the uh, lithium supply inside, it's going to be about 30 to 35 watts. Battery capacity, 2,000 milliamp hour. Um, charging time, about three hours. And uh, let's see, fully charged. It can partly make up to 12 um, blended things on a full charge. Now, here's an interesting thing. I thought the battery was running flat because when I turned it on... It cut off after five seconds and the light started flashing, but it turns out it's got a load sensor. It actually monitors the current. And if it detects that the uh, that there's not much a load, it'll cut off after um, that uh, five seconds. But if it's got loads, like if it's got churning up fruit like this stuff I'm about to put in it, then it will run for longer. Now, I was hoping that it wouldn't have any safety features. I was secretly, given how sharp these blades are, uh, I was hoping that when I press this button, it was going to burst into life, but no, no such luck. And it turns out there's a little row of magnets here that uh, are act as a sort of safety interlock that uh, if it's not in place, then it won't operate. When you turn it in, uh, the light flashes to show it is actually in the correct position. The top has two layers. It's got a sort of filter layer. I'm not sure if that's for filtering stuff going in or presumably filtering the lumps when it comes back out again. And then it's got the, the sort of lid. And I thought there was an, a further layer and I used brute force to get it off, but it turns out that's not actually supposed to come off. Not to worry. Came with a USB charging lead. I think this is a USB charging lead that came with it. It's pink, so that kind of matches it. But you know there's lots of pink charging leads around here. So I've been out and I've bought some uh, fruits to put in it. And I'm going to try and make a smoothie with this. So I'm going to put in water first. This is why the paper towel's down here for mess reasons. So I'm going to put in some water. Let's see if it all pushes out the bottom. Probably too much water. And I'm going to put in some simple syrup. Now, simple syrup is just a concentrated solution of white sugar and water. And it adds the required sweetness to things like this. Because on their own, it would be pretty sour. Particularly given the fruits I've chosen, which were frozen forest fruits, which are generally completely unpleasant. So there's a squishy strawberry. And berries, more strawberries. Bits of melon. More melon. Hard melon this time, so that's that's going to give it a test. Um, some more berries. Ugh. Shriveled red berries, whatever the fuck they are. <laughs> and, uh, oh, sorry, Peggy, 18. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Now, I do notice that they recommend that you don't just uh, press the button on this. They actually recommend tilt, tilting at an angle so that at least the motor's not starting under load. But uh, having said that, I'm gonna, I'm not going to do that. So let's get this on. Well, let's actually tilt it at an angle so you can actually see what happens here. Is this going to work? Blimey. Oh, it's just a uh, cutout. It's uh, flashing red. It's not happy. Oh, right, okay. That means it's a... Uh, I think it's found a bit of melon. Right. Um, well, it's definitely pureed it. Do I give it another go? Uh, it's it's flashing. It's flashing LEDs. Is this jammed or is it? Uh, I don't know. Or is it just decided it's a? Uh... Oh, goodness, goodness knows it's flashing the red and uh, blue LED. I wonder if it'll. I wonder if it's got a cutout that it'll only run for a certain time under a certain load. Or does it think the battery's flat even though I just charged it? That's not a very good result. Perhaps it's not the best thing to buy. But anyway, let's pour this out. 
I shall pour it, uh, I won't bother the filter actually, I shall pour it directly into the glass. It, it's got lots of lumps, I, I don't think it was happy with uh, with that bit of melon, I think that bit of melon was just beyond its ability, and that's, that's not a very good advert, is it? Uh, let's give this another go, if it's going to do it, is it going to do it? No, it's absolutely, it's not happy at all. It's dyed. Or, is it the safety feature? No, I don't think it is. What the fuck is it doing? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, right, so, yeah, give me a, I'm going to play about that and see if I can get it to go again. That's not a good result, is it? It is shitty and pink, apparently. Mm. The drink it produced is very nice, mainly because of the sugar, I have to say. I'm kind of perplexed at why that's doing that. It's flashing as though it's the... Uh, it's the magnets thing. I'm going to make a huge mess here, aren't I? No, it's absolutely... It, 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 does it think the battery's dead? I, I charged that. That's, that's annoying. Okay, right. Uh, I'm going to drink this and then I'll be back in a moment. Okay, well, it's decided to play ball again, and I haven't a clue why. I put it on charge, but having said that, yesterday when uh, I charged this up, I left it on charge of ages. It took about 1,000 milliamp hour charge from whatever state it was in, so I would say that's fully charged. However, I will say that when I was taking a look at it, I unscrewed this, and then I actually got a magnet, and I held a magnet next to the sensor, and then it suddenly worked. I don't know if it's got a problem with the magnetic sensor or something like that. But anyway, I think it's time to try again and make another smoothie. So this time it's going to be a more more adulty smoothie for big boys and girls. So I'm going to pour in some milk. And I'm going to add some more simple syrup because this is going to be a milkshake. And simple syrup uh, makes everything better. Then I'm going to add some ice cream. Uh, peanut butter and jelly ice cream. I've never tried peanut butter and jelly ice cream, but I have. Well, I'd say I've never tried it. Well, obviously I have because I've been eating some of it. So let's put in some lumpy bits into the thing. And some of those horrible little... I'm not sure these are supposed to be Smarties or M&Ms or something, but when they're frozen solid, uh, it just tastes like some scrunchy substance. And uh, as a final ingredient, well, not necessarily the final ingredient, let's try a bit of banana. Oh, and that kind of shows how far the colour temperature is off, the banana. That banana is supposed to be banana yellow. It kind of looks greeny but yellow, but don't worry. So we'll put some lumps of banana in, and here is the final ingredient. And this is what makes it special for big boys and girls. Rum. So in goes some rum. And I've discovered that you don't need to put this sieve bit in. You can actually just put the cap straight on, and it doesn't spill out everywhere. I tested and it didn't spare it everywhere. So let's uh, get the cover over this and give it another go. Mm-hmm. It, it's just... I get the feeling that maybe their choice of batteries isn't too generous for this. But it is doing the job now. Let's just leave it and see if it cuts out. I can hear the, the M&Ms rattling about inside. No, it seems to be actually handling it this time. Goodness knows what was wrong before. We'll find out, because I'm going to open this up. Right, that's enough. Let's see what our uh, alcohol-reinforced smoothie tastes like. That tastes all right. Hmm. Largely because of the simple syrup, ice cream and rum, I have to say. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to finish drinking this and then I'll be back in a moment and we'll take this unit to bits and see what's inside. Right, so let's uh, open this up and see what's inside. Now, I have to say that... I thought these would be powerful little new dimming magnets, but you know, they're not that powerful. I wonder if that's the problem is, I wonder if they've skimped out in the magnet strength uh, to save pennies during manufacturing. 
So this thing has little rubber feet that I'm guessing are hiding the screws. There's a bit of fluff from the jumper I've just pulled on. Mm. Uh, the screws are quite recessed. I don't think I'm going to reach. I'm going to have to get reinforcements in the form of this. It's better. So, three screws hold the base on. Um, I will say that since uh, resolving that, just by holding another magnet up to it, um, and that kind of gave it a new lease of life as such, it, it ran the full, it's operated flawlessly since then. I will say that when you put a lot of ice cream and stuff in, you, as kind of shown in the instructions, you have to hold it horizontal and then tilt it to actually so the motor doesn't get hit by the... Ooh, ooh, that's quite good. The full force of everything at once. Oh, this is quite interesting. Look at that. That's quite a nice construction. The lithium cell is warm. It's got thick cables going onto that big circuit board. The circuit board has a big MOSFET. It's got what I'm guessing is a current sense resistor. Hold on, let's get this up close and take a look. So we've got the big MOSFET. We've got the control chips. More than one control chip. I wonder if the I wonder if one of these is an op amp. Um, this the way the connections are coming to this chip. That might be the little control chip, the little eight pin chip. This might be an op amp. I shall explore this a little bit more. Um, and where's the charge protection circuitry? That actually might be the charge control chip. Actually, uh, right. Okay, one moment. I'm just going to reverse engineer this a little bit. Interesting stuff. It's very straightforward. So take a look at the circuit board first. It's got a 4056 charge control chip for the lithium cell. And the lithium cell is marked as being a 2 amp power lithium cell. So it's got the charge controller for that. It's got this generic control chip, which is anonymous. Well, I say generic. It's probably a microcontroller. It's got a beefy MOSFET. The MOSFET used is a... Um, the key numbers here are 86TO2GH, and the most notable characteristics are it's very high current rating. It's got a 75 amp current rating. It's quite a low voltage MOSFET, but keep in mind it is only around about um, the 4.2 volts of the lithium cell plus transient you might get off the motor. And it's on state resistance. It says 6 milliohms here, but that's actually, uh, looking at the data sheet, the 6 milliohms is at a voltage of gate voltage of 10 volts but at the much lower gate voltage that this is uh, getting from the uh, lithium cell and the control chip it's going to be closer to 10 to 15 milliohms but that's a tiny resistance we've got a sense resistor here uh, 0.005 ohms we've got a diode which is across the motor and uh, that's fundamentally it so taking a look at a rough block of the you know a rough block diagram of it so it's not complete here uh, it's got the USB input with some support circuitry for the 4056E, which is just across the lithium cell. I'm guessing that the over-discharge protection is done by the control chip monitoring the voltage. The Hall Effect sensor, uh, which is this little thing here and the bit that was playing up earlier on, um, it's got a 150 ohm resistor in it in series with it. It's a... Uh, uh, where is the data sheet? It's a... Uh, 251, and you look at these little chips, that's just, it looks like a tiny little transistor, but it's actually a full-blown control chip inside. And it takes the positive rail, the negative rail, and then it's just an output sort of logic level signal. Very simple, very easy to use. I do wonder if that was just maybe needing bent up. To, maybe it was just out of, just on the borderline of range of that. It's worth keeping that in mind if you ever get one of these and it does something weird. Um. The control chip drives the two LEDs via a single resistor. It gets its own power supply from the battery rail via a 10-ohm resistor, plus I've not shown it on here for clarity. There's a capacitor across it as well. It's got the button, just pulls one of the chip pins to ground. It's got uh, a 1K resistor to the gate of the MOSFET, 
and also a 1K resistor to the tap-off point of the sense resistor. Now, what actually happens here is when this uh, MOSFET turns on, the motor starts, and depending on the load and the motor, the amount of current through this resistor will vary. And as the load on the motor increases, the voltage across that resistor will also increase. Uh, and it's a quite a low value resistor, so it's a very tiny increase, but the control chip can detect that as a series of steps in its analog to digital converter, or possibly as some sort of programmable comparator inside. The motor has a reverse diode across it for protection. That's um, this diode here. Plus there's also a tiny little capacitor across it as well, just for possible interference suppression, possibly to remove transients and protect the MOSFET. And that's fundamentally it. It really is a very simple circuit. So um, the when you pull the, uh, let's say, uh, Let's just make sure this is going to be in focus if I'm coming a bit close to here. Get my little cheat sheet here. Let's bring the focus up to this level. Bit primitive, but it works. Uh, when you actually pull this bit here, it, there's a bit of play in the motor. The motor does jiggle up and down. It suddenly stopped jiggling. Oh, there it goes. It's now jiggling up and down. It doesn't feel like it's terribly tight in the seal. I don't see any stuff dribbling out in here, though. Um, I'm guessing that's going to be quite a tight press onto the motor shaft, so I don't think it would be easy to get that off. No, it feels quite tight. Powerful looking motor. Although you can't just look at a motor and say it's powerful, but you know, if it's drawing up to 10 amps, we're talking sort of drone-ish type little motors here. But yes, uh, I'm going to put this back together now and see if, it, if it's going to respond well to having this uh, sensor just nudged a little bit. Uh, I also wonder if the proximity to the motor upset it magnetically, although theoretically that steel case should shield it to a degree. Maybe I somehow, by holding the magnet up close to it, I kind of reset it. Oh, there's the, there it is, sensing the magnet. See the blue light flash on and off? Yeah, so uh, interesting. It's quite a gutsy little thing, you know, it's it's obviously not going to compete with a mains voltage blender, but it did the job, uh, particularly when you uh, slosh the stuff backwards and forwards, because you can hold it, you can control that, and, you know, they do say, and all these other similar models say, you know, just, you know, don't just pile the stuff on top of the blade, because it is direct drive and it's not extremely powerful but uh, you can tilt it backwards and forwards and it does at least have the current sensing that when it does detect that something stalls it will cut off and to reset it you just shake the object away and then press the start button again but that's it it's very straightforward it's quite an interesting little thing it's quite neat indeed so that's it back together and I may or may not have tested it with a milkshake which may or may not have ice cream and rum in it and note, things worthy of note are that when you're putting the circuit board back in this, there is a small recess in the plastic that uh, the Hall Effect sensor goes into to get it closer to the magnets in here. And it, it's also really quite important to note that as you slide the circuit board in, it triggers the Hall Effect sensor even without this top on because the magnetic field from the motor uh, is enough to actually trigger it, which could also be a factor behind why it played up earlier on. And also, as you slide it in and the Hall Effect sensor triggers, you also accidentally push the button in, it blends your bench slightly. Um, but fortunately, my fingers weren't in the way, so this is worth noting. If you do take one of these to bits, uh, even without this on, it may start in your hand while you're putting it back together. That is quite important. Other than that, uh, now I've resolved that slight magnetic sensor issue, it's it's quite a nice design. It's got a powerful motor. It does blend. I mean, it had no problem blending this. I did tilt it, though, to actually start that, and it just blends away quite happily with the chunks of ice cream and, uh, in this place, cookie dough uh, stuff in the ice cream. So it, it uh, worked fine, and it does time out after the 90 seconds or so, though it seems like a very long time. So in short, uh, after that blip, even though it's a cheapy generic item, it's quite nicely made inside and it does actually work. So um, it's, it's all right as a gadget.